Hey, what is going on YouTube? It's General Tariel, your coach of the Charlotte Charizards, returning again. Um, for those of you who do not remember, I said I was going to take a brief break from Pokemon, and that's exactly what I did. And it felt really good, and everything. It felt good. I really didn't think I was going to be back until Generation 8. But um, the one thing I missed was uploading to YouTube. Like, um, even though I'm not crazy popular or anything, I like I just still liked uploading to YouTube. I like sharing the videos. I like hearing feedback from my friends, everything like that. So um, I just wanted to do YouTube again. And my buddy Panther wanted me back in the APA. He still he kept trying to get me to play Pokemon again. I said, you know what? I'll go back into it. And uh, APA season five is definitely where it needs to be for me. One, APA is my home. And uh, two, I just already have a good um, kind of record, or not record for the season of course, but um, previous seasons I've done pretty well in APA and I just want to continue it. Um, and we have an amazing roster this season of coaches, um, a lot of returning coaches and a lot of um, new coaches as well, which I'm looking forward to face all of them and have some rematches and stuff like that. But um, the season of APA is a little different. For those of you who do not know, um, we draft three times in the regular season. Uh, it's a 12-week season, and we draft uh, each four-week interval intervals. Sorry. So uh, we draft initially. We do four weeks of battles with that team, and then we draft again, four weeks of battle with the second team. Then we draft again, uh, and four weeks of battles with the third team. And then when it comes to playoffs, if we qualify for playoffs, which I'm hoping we do, um, we'll be able to use the standard tier list, of course, that you see on the left on the draft slide. Um, we just we can use any Pokemon from the three drafts as long as it meets the tier requirements in both the um, one tier one, one tier two, two through three, uh, tier four, tier five, Mega, and then the 400 points. As long as it meets that requirements, we can use Pokemon from all three of the drafts and playoffs, which is actually really cool. And I'm really looking forward to this because um, not only did I want to like kind of get back into Monson playing, but um, there's still so many things I really want to try. And um, having multiple drafts for one season is going to be really helpful because I'm able just to try everything that I haven't yet. And um, that was definitely what it, I wanted to aim for. But also since it's multiple drafts, I'm able to um, get a few things that I want to try that are new while getting things that I'm comfortable with to support those that I feel like are very necessary and will provide like the best um, potential team for that Pokemon just to... Um, kind of prove that it was a worthy pick uh, to try out. So to start it off, um, I really was interested in Mega Heracross for trying it out because um, I've used a lot of like the tier one Megas and I really just want to try to branch out to other stuff. There's a few things I like to use and stuff like that. I also really want to use Mega Pinsir Mega Altaria, but um, this is on Wi-Fi and I'll gem my own Pokemon. I'm not about to deal with the frustration or return thing. It's just annoying to me. <laughs> I just want to have my team gen and ready. But um, Mega Heracross, so bulky, so physically offensive wall breaker, it's insane. Um, for those of you who do not know, I actually have helped um, my friend Kelly, um, my good buddy, under the radar, build that team with Mega Heracross, and I really suggest a Mega Heracross because I've been wanting to try it for a while, and I'm finally going to hopefully get around to try it this time around. But I knew going into this draft, Mega Heracross was not a first overall. Um, it, I believe I had pick number three. I had pick number three in the draft. And... Um, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to go with that. I was like, Lando T goes pretty well, but I really did just use that, and I really didn't want to do it again necessarily. Kieran Black, I felt like, would be really good just for another physical like threat to go along with um, Mega Heracross, but then Fairies would be a little bit more annoying, so I was like, I I'm just going to get something that has a lot of utility and something that I've actually never used, and I've seen people use it very well. Well, both very well and very poorly, and hopefully I can do it on the very well side. And that's Mew. Um, Mew can literally do everything. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Um, like the first Pokemon, the genetic Pokemon, whatever you want to call it. And it gets so many TMs. You can use it defensively. You can use it as a setup. You can use it as a reliable Scarfer. Excuse me. A very reliable support. Um, I can even use Baton Pass with it with like agility because we do have a, we do allow Speed Pass as long as we don't have any other stat with it, which is very interesting. So you can help that if I do get the Mega Heracross, I'd be able to get like an agility pass on Mega Heracross, and that could be really cool and weak. So, but um, apart from that, Mew's just very reliable, um, neutral Psychic type. Of course, it's got the base 100 stats all around for solid 600. Um, I've just seen people use this either very well in like multiple, like they use multiple moves, they use the fact that Mew's got a massive kit compared to people just bringing like a constant bulky with defog, leftovers, roost, um, 
and just like slight coverage I want to make sure I can use it as an offensive Pokemon and as a bulky Pokemon in support I don't want to strictly make it bulk like a lot of people do yes it's very strong bulky because it's very helpful for fighting types and stuff like that but um me I want to make sure I can apply it to a lot more because I wanted a new Pokemon Mew's definitely new to me and um, having strong support, you can definitely do that to support other potential picks that I get later in the draft. So I knew there was no problem going third overall with Mew, especially when um, Tapu Koko went first overall. I was kind of looking at him, of course, but it's understanding that uh, he went first um, to my boy Leo or Six Foot Hex. But um, Mew, definitely going to be pretty cool. Um, hopefully I can use it correctly and maybe um, as some help from a few people that have used it before because I definitely want to make sure I use all of its potential correctly and I don't just limit it to um, like a one-dimensional, two-dimensional uh, Pokemon when it's got so many possibilities. And uh, next up in the draft I wanted to get, um, it's kind of a questionable base off the tier for people but I really want to get this Pokemon because I love its support. I still think it's one of the better Pokemon. Um, it's questionable whether it's tier 2 or it's tier 3 and that's Nidoqueen. I got it at tier 2 for second second pick overall. Basically I got it second because I was really worried about the guys above me grabbing it. I just wanted it reliable and I felt like this was going to be a good enough tier 2 or sorry round 2 slash round 3 because um, I just know it wasn't probably going to make it all the way back to like round 4. I didn't feel like it would. Um, even though it was tier 2 and some people don't value it anymore at tier 2, I'll draft Nidoqueen whether it's tier 2 and I'm I'm drafting it like second overall again if um, it's tier 3 because that's a steal to me. Do I think Nidoqueen's weaker in tier 2? Yes. Do I think it's the strongest in tier 3 if it's in there? Yes. It's so much better than Nidoqueen no matter what people say. Yes, Nidoqueen's a wall breaker, but you need Nidoqueen's bulk as well, so it's just my opinion though. But Nidoqueen, amazing stealth rock setter to go along with Mew. I already have two solid stealth rock setters. Um, toxic spike support. The coverage on this thing with sheer force is insane. Just slap life orb on it and make it a bulky offensive and it's very, very supportive. You can also be mixed offensive between sucker punch po and uh, like poison jab support as well um, to be able to deal with like slightly more spadef um, variants that are either neutral or weak to poison. For example, running poison jab versus Sylveon is more ideal than running sludge wave. Um, Nino Queen just really is just a great supportive one. It's always been helpful for me. And P4G next generation, I'm pretty positive I used it pretty well. Um, I just, it's just a good Pokemon. It really is. Um, just being able to be run bulky, run a um, Super Berry on it, and run a Shucker or Piapa, so you can deal with the most common coverage for Nino Queen and Psychic and Ground. Um, and then you can also just have the, the necessary coverage with the Berry. Like, you know, like Shucko with the Ice Beam to deal with the ground types, and etc. It's uh, just a really, really good mod, and I love drafting it. And um, I definitely feel like it was going to help me with the potential Pokemon I was going to have on my team. Um, especially if I do draft Mega Hera, this is a solid poison type dummy with the bulky, fer bulky fairies that uh, Mega Hera Cross definitely struggles with. So that was one thing I was looking forward to. Now that I have my queen, um, I was looking at the next few picks I could have. I was kind of looking at Rotom Wash a little bit around this pick. But then I was looking at all the other picks, and I noticed how dangerous um, I could be of getting drafted. I really wanted to try Dragonite this draft, or at least at one point, and I felt like on this team it was going to be pretty solid, um, especially with like Mew support. So um, I wanted to get Dragonite, but I was afraid. I saw a few solid Fairy Steel um, teams already happening, and they were going to get a Dragon. Um, someone was telling me that you could just get Salamence if Dragonite's picked up, but I was like, I really just want to use Dragonite. I love Salamence, one of my favorite dragon types, but I've used it like twice before and I want to try something different. I haven't used Dragonite yet. So um, I decided to get third overall, which is uh, typically kind of early for Dragonite, depending on how you see it. A lot, If someone values it, then it goes pretty early, but typically Dragonite can definitely go later in a draft. It's one of those tier ones that will go like late on in the draft when people still have points remaining and they're like, eh, I'll take it. But um, I got this a little early, um, unfortunately it did cause um, Rotom Wash to go after this, so I wasn't able to pick that up because I felt like it paired pretty well with Mega Heracross, but Dragonite, once again, I just wanted to try it. Um, for those of you who do not know, Dragonite's a really, really reliable um, setup sweeper because of multi-scale, allowing it for when it's at full HP, that um, it takes a hit better, so it can live like a nice type move from full HP, um, even though it's four times weak. 
and then it can run a weakness policy with the multi-scale ability to where it eats up the super effective hit. I can set up an agility or a dragon dance and I can potentially just sweep. Um, he's also a really reliable choice band user because he does have priority and extreme speed, which is very, very helpful. Um, even then, Dragonite can be a bulky support because he has access to moves like Thunderwave, Defog, Tailwind, etc. Um, and then he has, of course, the Roost for bulk. He has Inner Focus for any possible like annoying flinch, like um, fake out users that I can kind of abuse. Um, he's also a potential um, special user. And also, the main reason I want a Dragonite, because in um, APA for the season, we decided to vote on the Z-Rule, and the Z-Rule that we decided on was that any Pokemon can use a Z-Rule, sorry, a Z-Move, um, as long as it's, of course, not Omni-Boosting, unfortunately, Medium Z is banned, and then Top of Medium Z is banned. But we don't have Z-Captains, any Pokemon can use any move. Um, that includes Z-Status, which is just really helpful, and already having Mew and Dragonite, amazing Z-Users are right out of the gate. Uh, is very very important because I just want to scare my opponent every possible week of what is he going to have for his Z-Crystal because that's what I plan on drafting is a lot of things that could be scary because you can think you have one um, check to a Pokemon and then the Z-Move is just able to get rid of it or you have Z-Support that allows me to um, potentially hinder one of his Pokemon or allow one of my Pokemon to set up something of the sort. So um, being able to have strong uh, Z-Abuser such as Dragonite is going to be really important for my team I feel like and just having an all already a nice physically offensive wall breaker and potential setup sweeper which strong support in Nido Queen and Mew, I feel like is really ideal. Um, but going from this point on, I knew I needed a um, good counters to both a fairy and ice. Um, mainly fairy because I will I still plan on getting Mega Heracross. And um, I need to be able to deal with those bulky fairies and then ice types of course because Dragonite really hinders from them and Needle Queen's also weak. So I wanted a good water and steel type next was my next plan. Um, I still want to pick up a lot more offense, but I felt like my bulk was going to be important the next two rounds, especially since I wanted Rotom Wash, and unfortunately that was taken away from me. So um, I also want solid hazard removal for Dragonite, so I can keep the multi-scale, and I, once again, I don't want to force Defog on Mew every week. So I want to at least get one or two more forms of hazard removal to support my Dragonite and the rest of my team, so Mew's not forced to bring Defog. So knowing that, I wanted to go ahead and get a Reliable Steel, because I saw they were kind of going out the door already, and... Um, I just decided to go with Registeel round 4. Um, so far some of these picks look like they go pretty early, but once again these are value picks for my team. They really help my team, I don't care at what point I draft them as long as I um, draft synergy for my team, that's all I care about. So um, Registeel, if you don't not know, it's a very one dimensional Pokemon. Um, it's very very bulky, um, typically run as Bidef set. And uh, like max HP, you have Seismic Toss, Stealth Rocks Protect, so you can regain more leftovers health. And then a fill-in move such as Toxic, uh, coverage moves such as Ice Punch, Iron Head, or Earthquake, um, or something of the sort. Very one-dimensional Pokemon, but very good at what it does because it's really bulky and a really solid Stealth Rock Setter. Now between Nidoqueen, Registeel, and Mew, I have three amazing Stealth Rock Setters and Hazards are looking very strong for my team, especially with the potential Sweepers such as Dragonite, as well as I have the Toxic Spikes on the side with Nidoqueen. Um, knowing this, I'm just able to be a lot more comfortable with my team and chipping them down over time, forcing switches, um, even if I'm starting to get a more bulky team, as you'll see. Uh, it's just really going to help support the team. Once again, um, Registeel just could be able to help versus any of Dragonite's weaknesses. Um, Ice, Rock, Fairy, um, and Dragon deals with all of those fairly easily, eats it up, and is able to either get up Stealth Rocks or I can make a proper prediction and switch out because Regirock really isn't doing too much. That's why it has to run Seismic Toss because its damage output isn't that strong. And Seismic Toss is a pretty reliable move for it nonetheless. Um, I don't really see any potential Z move I get to throw on Registeel unless I really wanted to um, catch someone off guard with like a um, Z Ice Punch, Z Earthquake, something of the sort. Um, It'd be a really cool tech to bring for like a potential direct answer to Registeel that I see is very obvious in the matchup. But um, majority of the time I will be just be running Leftovers Protect, I feel like, on Registeel. Uh, potential Super Berry, depending on the calcs, um, I might be able to get that percent back if I feel like I can abuse that more. Or if I don't want to pert run Protect on Registeel, I could definitely abuse more of like another potential move. But um, running Protect and Leftovers on Registeel is just very helpful, especially if I um, expect potential choice locked users and Scarf, Band, or Spex. Um, mainly, Registeel is very helpful versus these Scarf or Spex users. And um, I'll just be able to make sh like use Protect, scout what they're going to go for, and then make the proper move after because that really hinders them because they're locked into the move, of course. Always got to play it safe with Registeel. 
And then um, after getting red steel, once again, I wanted to get a solid water type that it was going to support my team. And even though I've already, um, I actually have never used red steel, by the way, I don't think I mentioned that or not. But um, I wanted to draft this reliable Pokemon that I've used before, and I actually used with Nita Queen on my P14 next gen team, and that's Blastoise. Really, really reliable, um, bulky water type with rapid spin. I wanted to get that rapid spin so it helps Dragonite, of course, with the multi scale, not forcing Defog on Mew, like I mentioned. And also, he just has solid bulk on both sides. Um, I can, um, of course, get the spin. I have Roar and Haze to get rid of any um, potential sweepers. I have Scald, of course, for the, just the stab and potential burn, which is really helpful for physically offensive Pokemon. Um, I can range between Leftovers and a Super Berry, which is really common on Blastoise. Um, I can also um, go to like a potential, potential uh, Wakan Berry or something of the sort to reduce um, Electro-type moves, so I'm able to take a hit properly, and I could potentially run Miracle on Blastoise. I have done that before. Um, I've also run a Soul Vest Blastoise with Miracle, or just all four type or four moves. Of course, the Soul Vest, um, which is actually a pretty reliable set in my opinion. Some people disagree, other disagree otherwise. But um, also, if Blastoise is a really helpful, um, like reliable bulk Pokemon and stop potential sweeping, um, I can give it the um, Ice Z Crystal, and I can run Z Haze. Not only does it eliminate stat changes, but I get Blastoise all the way back to full health. So, for like example, something sets up in front of my face. Like, I don't know, like a Dragon Dance um, Salamence, just for an example. Um, I'm able to live one direct hit because I'm like entirely physically bulky. I can go for a Z Haze on Salamence. I get all my, or not all my health back. I think it might only be 50%. It might be all my health. I don't properly, I don't remember off the top of my head, but I did use it in the next gen. Um, I get majority of my health back. I'll just say that. And then I might be able to um, scare it out with an Ice Beam the following turn. He's not able to um, sweep versus me anymore. He might have lost um, his only chance to set up because he could come back in, take too much damage from rocks, and I have priority in the back, something of the sort, um, to where you know Dragon I can clean up with extreme speed. So um, Blastoise is just another reliable bulky um, Pokemon, and I really needed that Rapid Spin. I felt like it's really helpful to have Rapid Spin when I have such reliable hazard setters on my own team to where I don't have to defog and get rid of my own hazards, which could put me on the back foot a little bit when I can definitely Rapid Spin and um, keep the hazards on his my opponent's side of the field and be able to continuously pressure them. Um, as for my next few picks uh, from here on out, I kind of wanted to start looking at a little bit like a little less support, but more so more offense. I wanted to find that um, very good discount offense that you can typically find in drafts because even though they don't have reliable recovery in Nidoqueen, Blastoise, and Registeel, they have to rely typically on Leftover slash Black Sludge or Super Berry. Um, that's really solid bulk. Mew, of course, can be bulky and has reliable recovery in Roost, um, but other than that, I wanted to make sure I had offense. Because as of right now, my only real offensive Pokemon I kind of see is Dragonite. Um, of course, Sheer Force Needle Queen is also really helpful and can be a wall breaker. Mew could do a few things, but Dragonite and Needle Queen are kind of just all I'm looking at right now. Um, but there was one Pokemon I definitely wanted to grab because of its tier. Um, the tier list we based this off of when they were making the talk was of one before this Pokemon got a special hidden ability that came out and it really improved it. Um, it was already a pretty solid Pokemon in my opinion, but definitely in terms of EDC it became very popular, and uh, that's Incineroar. Oh, there we go, Incineroar. Um, Incineroar is Dark and Fire for you, those of you who do not know, and if you do not know, I guess you never played through Sun and Moon. So, um, which is good for you, because terrible game. Anyways, Incineroar... Uh, has Intimidate, but it was left in Tier 4, and it was not changed to Tier 3 when it was um, updated for the dock. So that was a steal to me, so I definitely want to take Incineroar pretty early, and I felt like this was a good time to do so, because um, I planned on completing my um, Fire, Water, Grass core. This, um, basically this wheel, I have third overall, so it's not really that much of a wheel, but it's close enough. And um, Incineroar I just felt like it was pretty helpful. It can hit on the um, harder side. Intimidate's pretty helpful for my phys um, to people to just eat physical moves sooner. Once again, it helps me prevent a little bit more setup because of Intimidate if they're like a Dragon Dance, Sword Dance, etc. Um, Incineroar also gives me um, a very solid Solfus user, um, potential Scarfer, Choice Band user. Um, I said the Solfest. <laughs> Um, either way, uh, very solid stab knockoff, which is very nice because I didn't really have too much knockoff on the team at the current time. I think it was just Registeel and Mew that have it. I don't believe uh, Needle Queen gets it. Um, but definitely knockoff's just so helpful to get rid of items. It also allows me to scout for potential Z moves on Pokemon. 
or sorry, see crystals to see if they're holding that, which is very important. Um, Incineroar is just such good um, support as well in like Taunt and such. Uh, will o of course, as well. I really wish Incineroar got Sucker Punch. I feel like it really should, but um, we'll do with what we can <laughs> nonetheless. Um, might bring his uh, in his malicious Moon Assault Z move just just cause because it looks pretty cool, and uh, I love using Incineroar in Smash Ultimate as well. He's a really fun character, especially since they buffed his recovery. But um, definitely a fun character, and um, I'm looking forward to using Incineroar once again. Never used it before um, in draft format, so using it here I felt like would be really good, and I get to abuse the Intimidate that it has now that I haven't really seen too much on. So um, I feel like I'm going to use Incineroar pretty properly. I do like my fire types, and I use them pretty well. Um, and always having a nice, strong, reliable dark, because in my opinion, there's very few reliable darks that in draft league format. Um, Incineroar is definitely one of them, even though I do wish he had Sucker Punch, but um, I'm not even sure if he gets Pursuit, to be completely honest. But having momentum in U-turn is also pretty helpful, because as of right now, the only momentum I have are Incineroar and Mew. So I definitely want to capitalize on that as well, and you'll see me um, pick up a few, bit, few more of those. But... Um, at this point, I forgot to mention, I think it was a round or two rounds ago, um, there was only me and three other coaches that didn't have Megas. Megas went early, like first three rounds, and it was three or four rounds, and then it was left to four coaches. Um, uh, Panther and I were two of them, and then we messaged uh, YouTube fan Nate and Sleepy Night 77, or Kyle. And uh, we checked with what, what we all wanted. We all wanted different Megas. So from here on out, Mega Heracross was set. I could get last place. Some people find it cheating for draft, but it's like, it's clever if you do it because we're coaches, it's whatever. But um, I can get Mega Heracross last, nice and easy. I can focus on getting everything else. I don't have to worry about my Mega being stolen because there wasn't really too much I was looking forward to using at that point in um, like Mega Heracross's tier because I didn't want to abuse the bonus points because I get plus 40 for using Mega Heracross added to my um, 400 free points. So that would be very helpful. But um, a support mod that I wanted to use that completes both my um, Dragon Fairy Steel and Firewater Grass that I have not used yet is um, Whimsicott. Whimsicott with this prankster I feel like it's going to be very very helpful for this team. Um, not only do I get you know prankster defog, prankster tailwind, the prankster tailwind's key because I can literally just run a wall breaking Dragonite, Needle Queen, or the Mega Heracross set and just destroy teams, absolutely wall break with those three and I still have more to come potentially. And uh, the defog is really helpful because once again I have more hazard removal to support Dragonite as well as the rest of my team. Um, having, you know, just potential prankster um, Memento as well to stop any potential setup or getting potential setup ready for my Mew or Dragonite is uh, very important. I can also bring in Mega Heracross and get off a potential free Swords Dance or Substitute or something of the sort. Or if I know they have flying coverage, I go for Memento they can't have after. And I do have Z Memento because of the Z potential Z move with any Pokemon. So that allows me to get my health back into my Dragonite, which allows for more multi scale if the um, Stealth Rocks are removed or there's none on the field, which is very, very important. Um, I felt like that just went really well with Dra or Dragonite, and I wanted to use that. Um, apart from that, Whimsicott's pretty good offensively, with um, its main coverage being like, um, sorry for saying um so much, uh, Moonblast, or I think it just uses Energy Ball for grass type move, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, but apart from that, uh, Whimsicott also uses like a bulky substitute lead to set with Prankster, which is so trolly and so good. I can also use, also use Prankster, Prankster Encore, so I get people stuck in setup. Um, Whimsicott is just such a reliable um, trolley Pokemon. I'm really looking forward to using it. It has amazing support, and it has um, pretty solid potential um, offensive cap capabilities as well. Jeez, I'm sorry, I couldn't talk. Um, also gives me more momentum in U-Turn. Once again, I'm going to be looking for a little bit more momentum because I have really solid hazards and I didn't really have it on the team yet. So I do want to capitalize on that. But now that I got another support mod, once again, I want to look for that um, default or sorry, low budget um, offense that's really good. But um, I was still able to pick up at least a tier two if I wanted to because my bonus points I get from Mega Heracross. And I was looking and I felt like Nita Queen's still helpful versus bulky fairies. But since I have Dragonite and Mega Heracross, I want to get something else that can help me versus fairies just in case I don't, um, or I'm not able to bring Nita Queen that game or Nita Queen dies early. I want to have another reliable Pokemon. This Pokemon I used before did very well with, I believe it was APA Season um, 2 I used it. Did very well for me, in all honesty. And that is um, 
Gengar. Gengar is an absolute wall breaker and is so solid. Gives me a nice um, 110 speed tier as well, which is beneath Whimsicott, which I just got, but it helps me between the 100 and 110, and then to the 116 that Whimsicott has. So, um, Gengar also gives me potential spin block, which um, allows me to deal with um, potential people trying to get rid of my Toxic Spikes or Stealth Rocks that I put on their side of the field. Um, also, Gengar, another very strong Z-Move abuser between mainly Phytanium Z. I love running Phytanium Z on Gengar. It absolutely destroys the Steel types and destroys the normal types that kind of want to wall Gengar on like a SPDF base. So that is very helpful. Also just running like Poison or Goat Sea can actually nuke a team, which is insane. But typically running like Life Orb or something like that on Gengar doesn't hurt it at all. Choice Specs, Choice Scarf. I can run a Chick Trick Choice Scarf. I can run a Destiny Bond Step, which is pretty troll. I do have um, access to stuff like Will-O-Wisp as well for support. Um, Gengar is just a really, really good Pokemon and I love what it does. It's just very reliable. Um, apart from that, Gengar is really just yeah, just reliable. I just like using it, and I felt like it was good with the team, because once again, I want to deal with those bulky fairies. And I love offensive ghost types. There needs to be more offensive ghost types in the game, in my opinion, because they are just so good. Like, Gengar and Chandelure are outstanding. And I even love, like, Choice Bandit, Golurk, as well as a, like, low-tier Miss Magius. I love using all of these. So they definitely need to add more ghosts in, like, the future generation games that are pretty good offensively, because I just feel like it's a very underrated... Um, thing to pick up and some people don't look at Gengar as much anymore because it doesn't have its levitate ability but like come on now Cursed Body is still a good meme if you land it so. but um, after Gengar I was really really looking at Slurpuff I wanted solid webs to support um, Dragonite, Neoqueen and um, Heracross even Incineroar and Gengar works as well for their um, nice offense especially if there's a Scarf that's supposed to deal with Gengar after it but unfortunately, Sir Puff was taken by Wolf, or Wolfy Glick, who actually also took um, Rotom Wash, so he kind of sniped me twice a little bit. But um, Sir Puff also gave me a potential setup, but mainly I was looking at the webs. Wouldn't be in a video without a voice crack anyways. So um, <laughs> uh, I really wanted the potential webs, uh, just so I don't have to like kind of rely on like Prankster Tailwind from ones I got. I do also have Tailwind on Dragonite if I really wanted to, or Mew. But um, other than that, I kind of wanted to, you know, have other potential um, reliability, especially if they don't have solid hazard removal. Especially after I got Gengar, I felt like there was a chance that I can, you know, um, throw, sorry, throw Slurp Puff in there and get off uh, webs. And then if uh, they only rely on spin, I can just always go into Gengar and get free spin block, especially if it's not that strong of a Pokemon, considering Gengar's on a low bulk. Um, <clears throat> I'd be able to have a very good advantage, have webs up, keep it up, and have a very offensive team. And that I feel like benefited me pretty well. But since it was sniped, I felt like I wanted to take a um, kind of a steal in tier 4 in my opinion. Once again, um, my boy Kelly under the radar kind of enlightened me here. And that was Linoon, because Linoon was put in tier 4, and in my opinion, I definitely still think it is a tier 3 sweeper. It is one of the better sweepers in draft league format and in the game period, to be completely honest. Just with Gluttony Belly Drum, put on a super berry, goes right back to full. If you don't hit it, then you're basically in trouble, because this thing's got good coverage too. Not only does it have the stab extreme speed to go basically in front of ever anything, it's got very strong um, damage and return, or body slam, whatever I choose, based off of course, since I'm not genning for myself. <laughs> and then, um, also for Linoon, it also gets like Stomping Tantrum, Shadow Claw, Throw Chop, um, all that good stuff. Really solid coverage that allows it to take on certain bulk that people feel like they can stop with, and like some Steel types, some Ghost types, but it doesn't always work for them. So Linoon, I feel like would definitely be able to support, especially when I have Whimsicott in the back with the Memento, potential um, use support, all the hazards and Stealth Rock and Toxic Spikes to get off the necessary chip versus the potential um, Linoon, uh, like wall, or sorry, walls to stop Linoon. Um, also just the wall breakers I have dra in Dragonite, Incineroar, Gengar, and Mega Heracross, which I'll have soon. Um, would definitely, definitely benefit for Linoon to chip away at those walls and just make sure Linoon can set up and win in the end. Um, Linoon is definitely going to be a win con in most games, I feel like. Um, it's just such a reliable sweeper, and it's able to do its job so well because of its coverage, because of Gluttony with a Super Berry, and all of it. Linoon is um, going to pick up quite a few kills and clutch a few games for me, I feel like. Um, it's just that good of a Pokemon, and if my opponent's not careful, they're just going to get swept by Linoon. So... 
After that, I really um, was debating on my last pick before Mega Heracross for my tier 5. I was looking at either, um, what is it, Crustal for uh, potential spikes as well as more hazards, potential setup. It kind of abuses a Z move and it gives me a little bit more bulk. Of course, I could be like the weak armor hazard set, which is pretty good. Um, as well as I was looking at Electrode for really solid speed, another Volt Switch user, and it gives me an electric type. Um, as well as potential dual screens that I can run on Electrode. And um, when looking at that in comparison to the team, I really like Spikes, but I decided to go with Electro. Excuse me. I really wanted to be used as the 150 speed tier, considering um, my only fastest Pokemon was 116 and Whimsicott. So being able to have a Pokemon like Electro to deal with um, Pokemon such as Mega Aerodactyl, um, Crobat, stuff like that, is going to be very helpful for my team. Also, Volt Switch Pivot is just so helpful. If my opponent has a very um, poor ground type or I'm able to um, just tear apart the ground type on my opponent's team, um, not so sure how well I would do that comparing um, my main stabs to deal with ground type or just Whimsicott and Blastoise, which aren't typically run too offensive all the time, but we'll have to see. Um, but Electrode, really solid pivot. Um, doesn't have amazing move pool. It does get access to Foul Play to stop for potential setup, which I could Scarf Electrode to make sure nothing outspeeds it, even like after a Dragon Dance or a Quiver Dance, anything to support. Mainly Dragon Dance so I can get the Foul Play off after, and just, um, or I can Volt Switch out, um, knowing I can get the necessary chip and come back in. Fortunately, probably has to sacrifice something, get off the Foul Play, and I can knock it out from there. So if they're not aware of that, then that can be um, very good on Electrode's part. Um, I can also bring dual screens, like I mentioned, because it does get light screen reflect. Throwing uh, light clay on there is not a bad idea at all. Um, apart from that, Electrode's really just there to be my solid electro type. I feel like every team kind of needs to drive one if they can, and I just, for this team, valued more of a pivot and potential dual screen user over um, spikes. I do really love spikes, I do, but I felt like Crustal was um, just not enough, and I felt like the speed was kind of helpful for this team. And um, as well as Electrode having like just a fast taunt user and the pivot that I really want to add to this team. Because now at this point with the wall breakers I have, I have pivots in Mew, Whimsicott, Electrode, um, Incineroar, and I believe that's it. Yeah, but those are all still really solid pivots that I can definitely abuse. And um, knowing this, I'm going to be able to get in wall breakers more. Um, on the constant stealth rocks and toxic spikes I'll have on the field potentially. So I'm going to be able to use that pretty well with this team. And lastly, of course, I did pick up Mega Heracross. Like I mentioned, this thing's attack stat is insane. And even though it is four times weak to flying, do not let that fool you. This thing eats hits. It only has to put in a little speed, if any, almost any every match. Sometimes it will need to run Jolly if there's like a um, Pokemon similar to that. Like sorry, <clears throat> similar to this or Nidoqueen, Tor's got a low speed but it is strong pretty offensively and I need to watch out for it, potentially run a Jolly if needed, but typically a bulky adamant set on Mega Heracross is just so reliable, it just does so much damage, close combat, pin missile, rock blast, knock off, um, what other stuff does it get, earthquake, um, all that good stuff, it is such good coverage, it is so good at what it does, having skill link for like pin missile and rock blast is so freaking nice as well as bullet seed for like bulky water types it's just so solid um sword stance for potential sweep substitute just is basically free and a lot of times it's pretty helpful to bring on uh, mega heracross because there's only a few things that really annoy it and once you get the sub because you get so much damage off for them just trying to break your sub which is insane um i can i just feel like i can really abuse this pokemon with the team i'm happy with what i drafted around knowing i'm gonna get mega heracross and i feel like i can really abuse it um I really enjoy this draft, actually. I really do. Um, unfortunately, I only get to use it for four weeks, but that's not too bad because I feel like the team does kind of like lack in a little bit of the bulk department. I do love Blastoise, Neo Queen, Mew, and uh, Registeel, as well as kind of um, Whimsicott and a little bit of Incineroar, but um, only a few of those have, like, basically just Whimsicott and uh, Mew have actual reliable recovery, which um, some people don't mind, but in majority of my bulky Pokemon, I do really like reliable recovery like for example i really not a fan of wish users because majority of the time i feel pressure to run protect um is very predictable when you want to go heal another pokemon and stuff like that so but with this team offensively and the support that it has mainly the support i keep saying support because it's got good support because i like support really good it has amazing z move abusers that i'm going to very enjoy for these next four weeks 
Um, as for the schedule for the four weeks that you're going to see this team, I'm going to be taking on Panther, Wolf Glick, A Drive, and um, Just Kurt. So those are the four that I'm going to fix with this team. And then once those four weeks are done, you will see another draft analysis video from me. Uh, I don't believe every team's going to be doing a draft analysis video, but I'm definitely going to do one for everyone because I love making these. And um, it's definitely going to help out for you to understand the reasoning why I drafted the team and how I plan on using it for the next four weeks and how I could potentially um, use it in playoffs once I get there. Because once it gets to the later drafts, um, especially if I do well these first four weeks as well as the next one, um, mainly I'm thinking draft three, I'm only going to be drafting things that really benefit the rest of my team to where I can kind of get a um, very solid um, team synergy for the playoffs that I feel like can help me versus teams that I might struggle with that are already doing well that I know will probably make it in the playoffs. So the third draft is going to be a lot of um, awareness of the other drafts and the potential um, playoff um, contendies, so I just have to be careful then. But the four weeks, we're going to start off strong. Unfortunately, our first week is versus Panther, who normally always does well versus me. I did beat him in P4G Next Gen, but he normally always has the read on me, because those of you who do not know, Panther records all of my battles. He records my replays. So if anyone knows how I play, it's Panther. Last time I faced him in the APA Season 4. No, Season 3. Season 3. Um, he destroyed me. That was, that was insane. But um, hopefully we get revenge. Hopefully we do well this season. I believe we will. Um, I might be a little rusty because I really haven't played much since. Um, I did a little bit of the APA gym leader challenge where I had all dragon types and stuff like that. But um, maybe I'll be able to do pretty well this season. I really hope so. So um, I will see you guys week one when we face Panther. And if you're just looking at DAs, I guess I'll see you in the second draft analysis video. But good luck to all the coaches this season. I hope you stick around. Make sure to subscribe to all of them. All their links will be in the description. Please stick around for every battle. Um, I'll do a team build before every battle, and then I'll show the replay of the battle. Unfortunately, I cannot live call. Please understand that. And um, I'll see you guys when I see you. Sub, like, share, deuces.